Gravel pits can be a huge vector for spread of invasive plants if not managed correctly. Infested construction materials are often excavated from gravel pits that do have invasive species and these are used to build and maintain roads along transportation corridors and they can spread very, very quickly. An invasive plant is any non-native species that has the potential to impact BC's economy, environment, or social factors like human health. Invasive species are recognized globally as the second greatest threat to biodiversity next to habitat loss. It costs a lot of money to manage and control invasive plants. If we can hit them at the prevention stage, it saves us a lot of money later on. Invasive plants can often be quite toxic, so the social impacts are huge, and environmentally as well. Invasive plants can create monocultures very, very quickly because they don't have any of their natural limiting factors. It's really important to control the spread of invasive plants and prevent any new invasive plants from entering your gravel pit. It's also required. If they're listed as noxious weeds under the BC Weed Control Act, that legislation requires any landowners to control those noxious weeds on their property. There's some really easy, simple things that you can do to prevent the spread of invasive species in your gravel pit. Prevention is very important because it's the most successful way to get rid of invasive species. So a good method of prevention is to clean all equipment. That includes heavy machinery, inspecting it, removing any sort of seed, leaves, roots that you see, and also your own personal equipment, boots, helmets, pockets. So all crew members should be doing that in order to stop the spread. Inspect new incoming and outgoing soil and aggregate material to ensure it is free of invasive plant vegetative parts. If invasive plants are identified, avoid transporting material when possible as seeds and or vegetative plant parts are likely present. The removal of overburden should be done in layers, so material containing the largest amount of the seed bank is not mixed into the top layer of gravel. It's important not to park in an area that's infested with invasive plants. Those plant parts and seeds easily catch onto the wheels and can be transported to the next site. Carry out work within the pit in a manner that promotes retaining desirable vegetation and minimizes unnecessary disturbance. Ensure gravel pits are closed to public access. Identify and inventory invasive plants. Use available resources such as the Field Guide to Noxious Weeds and Other Selected Invasive Plants of British Columbia, Targeted Invasive Plant Solutions Fact Sheets, available at bcinvasives.ca, and local expertise. Coordinating management efforts is really, really key to preventing the spread of invasive plants. Call your Regional Invasive Species Committee. You can chat about the best management plan to approach that invasive plant, and they will help you move forward, clean up the pit, and make sure that you can use that gravel. There are a few different ways that you can manage and control invasive plants. You can control them manually, you can control them chemically, or you can use biocontrol. So it depends entirely on the species of invasive plants that we're talking about. It's really important to know what species you're dealing with and have all the information that you need to treat them properly, safely, and effectively. The best results typically come from administering a combination of the following techniques. Keep the areas surrounding the gravel pit and disturbed areas within the gravel pit populated with native and or domestic plant species that are suitable and adaptive to the site. Before purchasing seed, always request the certificate of seed analysis from the supplier before the mix is blended to ensure that invasive plants are not included in the seed mix. Before carrying out manual control, find out the reproductive strategy of the plants present. For invasive plants that reproduce by seed, ensure the plants are removed prior to flowering and setting seed. For plants that reproduce through stem and root fragments, remove them with caution as a tiny piece of root or stem tissue left behind can produce a new plant. Dig deep and broad, ensure the entire root system is removed and properly disposed of. It is recommended that manual control efforts be followed up with herbicide treatment, if required or prescribed, to ensure all remaining plant material is treated. Where herbicides are used, they should be chosen for compatibility with integrated pest management practices, pit policies, or recommendations from pit managers, local invasive plant specialists, or land managers.